Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, another fun video, at least uh, a fun concept for me. Uh, today, we are actually going to look at some of the upscaled action figures from the different uh, wrestling toy lines. So, now when you think upscale, I'm not talking, you know, bendies, four inches up to, you know, eight inch rubber LJN figures, right? When I talk upscale, I'm talking about three ups and possibly four ups uh, based on let's say those four inch bendies or the four inch galoobs hasbros etc now i don't know what what's up with uh, a lot of these toy lines but you, you come out with the general rubber figures or maybe they're made from plastic or hardened rubber like the galoobs to this day i still don't know if they're hardened rubber or if they're hardened plastic but you got those lines of figures. You also seem to always get like rubber figures with the Hasbros going out, you losing their contract, and then the Just Toys, WWF, Bendems uh, come out a year later. And, uh, you know, followed by Jack Specific, their toy line, bone crunching action figures, stuff like that. And uh, a lot. So not only are you getting rubber figures a lot of time. Bendables for for Just Toys, for WCW, etc. You're also getting like these super huge action figures. Now, I don't know what the concept be t behind creating all these upscaled figures are. Because they're, they're unplayable figures. You know, they're not like stuffed animals. I, I couldn't understand the Tonka Wrestling Buddies. Yes, I have my original uh, two pillows... Hulk Hogan and Warrior from, you know, 91, I think they came out. But those will not be part of this video. Now those, you know, like I said, they're 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 stuffed animal type deals, right? And, uh, well, they're not animals, but you know what I mean. Um, they were not only playable, you know, guys that we beat up. and But, you know, like I said, they're, they're pillows. You can sleep on them. They, they served a multitude of purposes. But these big scale figures, they are nothing more than display pieces. And honestly, how many parents were spending fifteen, twenty dollars on these type of action figures back in the day when they know their kids aren't gonna play with them? They can't play with them. Not only are they too big and unmanageable, but there are very few figures actually created for these lines. So, you know, that was another issue. But we are going to take a look at at least the figures that I have on hand. And we're going to start as early as possible. So we're going to start with LJNs. We're going to move into Hasbro's, WCW. And then we're going to finish off with the... I don't know. I, I don't know who makes these toys. Well, we'll take a look at the end. But, I mean, I would say Jack or Toy Biz. But uh, we'll, we'll see at the end when we look at them. So... First figure we're going to look at, who other than the immortal Hulk Hogan himself. You know why? Because it's Hulk Hogan. I don't care what you're looking at, WCW, WWF, you will always have a Hulk Hogan around. Uh, he has a very fun figure. Now, these LJNs, upscale figures, are 16-inch figures. And these are actually the biggest figures you know, among the upscale brands. And getting these boxes, these these figures in package, I mean, if you find a mint box, they're probably going for like $500 to $700 on eBay, so absolutely crazy. Maybe if you're lucky to find one on auction, maybe you could swoop in and win on one for like $250, $275, but you might have to go up to $300. You know, a lot of these packages... You might see the windows in the package damaged, and that's going to help you, you know, get a little bit better of a price. I don't know how much I paid for this, 150 200 I still feel like it was a fantastic purchase. Uh, one of the issues I would find with that, though, is that I keep buying these guys, and of course, they don't always come with, you know, championship belt, so I got to go out and purchase the belt. So now I've got, like... One upscaled Hogan I've been trying to sell for like a year and a half. I've got two more, you know, back on the floor over there. Complete. Plus, I've got this. So, I basically have through a three loose and one carded. Or a one new package. But, 
you know, they're not, unlike the other LGN figures, they're not stationary figures. You know, you can actually move the arms and legs, which is fantastic. The championship belt is absolutely killer. I mean, look at the graphics on that thing. That is perfect. I'm seeing a lot of people like uh, Mike Teresa on uh, on uh, on YouTube. He he has he also has an eBay eBay account as well, but and he sells a, a lot of the custom figures that he makes, and he makes yes customized figures from the eight inch figures, but he also takes the upscale figures. You know, get a new head mold, create Ultimate Warrior or Macho Man or basically any of your favorite characters. I'm thinking, you know, with these other guys. I might end up doing that and just kind of get some customized characters. That way I'll have more than just three or four <laughs> loose Hulk Hogan's laying around. But I don't want to do that. I mean, if these were completely destroyed, I would understand. And, you know, I, I accept it. But I, I just don't want to destroy something that's, you know, still quality. And if it ever gets sold in the future, you know, take that option away from someone else who could really enjoy the figure. But... This is, again, your 16-inch LJN Hulk Hogan. Absolutely fantastic. So, you got your key face for the 1980s. And you might have who could potentially be the biggest heel of the 1980s. For me, when I think mega heels, Andre the Giant, sure, but he was like latter half of the, of the 1980s, so it doesn't really count, not really. You know, King Kong Bundy, I think he came in around 85, 86 or something. So, yeah, I think he really should have had a, a much larger run or bigger push than he, than he did. At some point, King Kong Bundy even became like a, like a comedy, you know, like comedic relief type of deal, right? Put him against Hillbilly Jim. And then later on, put him back against Hillbilly Jim with a bunch of little people, you know, going, you know, being squashed by a 450 pound man. I mean, no. Um, I just don't think King Kong Bundy was utilized as well as he should have. That man should have been like heavyweight champion. I don't care. He should have been back and forth with like Hogan or, or whoever was being champion at that time, right? So I've always said Volkov and Iron Sheik and King Kong Bundy are probably your biggest heels of the 80s. But Roddy Piper, I, I think there would be a lot of argument that he was the biggest bad guy. But to me, I always feel like... I remember Piper as a good guy. I always remember him as a good guy. So I can't really see him as the bad guy that he was, you know, much earlier on. So, And I, I think he might actually have an even better figure than Hulk Hogan. Mostly because the, the kilt and with the little belt that wraps around the kilt is uh, pretty spectacular. I could just take this out of the box. I don't. I, I just leave it as is. But this is your Hot Rod Roddy Piper. And, you know, he's just another one of those guys that I have multiple uh, figures of. I remember I bought this one loose. And I bought it on auction. I think I wanted it for like 175 I, I, I didn't have any of these figures at the time, right? So the first 16-inch LJ I ever purchased was a Roddy Piper, you know, with kilt and everything. And then I put it on my wife's eBay account, like, trying to earn her some extra money. And I put it down for, like, two seventy five. I honestly, I had, I wasn't interested in selling it. That's why I kind of put it up there. And, you know, a couple months later, it finally sold, and I'm like, Packaging that thing up though to ship it out, I was so sad. I did not. I honestly didn't want to sell this. I thought it was a fantastic piece, and of course, since then, I mean, I've acquired this guy numerous times more. I have this version. I have another, you know, uh, bare skin uh, Roddy Piper without the shirt, kilt, and everything, and of course the Carter figure. So, I think on auction, Roddy Piper probably sells for more. Again, you're. You're probably getting two, three hundred bucks for the for just a loose piper. Uh, this one is, in my opinion, this is practically mint. Like I don't see any real major discrepancies. The shirt and kilt are clean. This is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> Roddy Piper, man. 
one of my top ten all-time favorite wrestlers, and I'd probably put him like number seven, number eight, maybe. I don't know. Amazing. One of my oldest memories of Roddy Piper, I guess because I was a little bit older and I could actually remember such things, I think it was, uh, I want to say WrestleMania 8, so that would have been, what, 92, which would have been, I was seven years old. I remember, I, I never, I didn't know who he, who he squared off against, not until I watched the tape recently, but the part where, you know, Bret Hart is down on his knees and he's bloody. Roddy Piper, he's got the bell in his hand and he's about to just knock him the heck out. He could have retained his championship belt, but he ended up getting rolled up and Bret Hart defeated him and became new Intercontinental Champion. And uh, what kind of remind me of uh, one of those movies, one of those karate movies. Uh, I think the, na the name of the movie was called Best of the Best. I, I could be wrong. Uh, just kind of like a little side note, side description. So there's, you know, American fighters going up against, I think they're from Korea, uh, the best Korean fighters, and they were in the finals. And uh, one of the guys on the Korean team actually killed the brother of one of the fighters on the American team uh, in a match. And so he had him, in, basically he had his brother's killer on his knees, or no, no, he wasn't on his knees, he was still standing, but you could have gone up to him and basically killed him, I mean, he was so weakened and out of it, and the fact that he spared him and ended up costing them the match, I, I kind of think of that movie when watching that scene with Roddy Piper and Bret Hart, you know, you're, you're definitely being the bigger man, and I thought that was fantastic, so... Roddy Piper is just a legend in so many different attributes. So many different respects. Uh, yeah. LJN, they, they they really killed it with their toy lines. Dumb wrestlers, the 16-inch figures, bendies, video games, 8-inch figures. I mean, they just, they were all over the place. And they were, to me, I thought, I would think that they would be a highly successful business, but... How they were absorbed by Grand Toys and just, I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> All right. So next up, we are moving on to my favorite toy line, which is Hasbro. And Hasbro, once again, you just know that they're going to come out with some of the best figures. So the LJNs, as I said, were 16-inch figures. I believe Hasbro were 12-inch figures, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm trying to look at here to see if they give you a size. But I'm almost positive these were 12 inches. Mm, I could have sworn it said so, but it doesn't. But that's okay. Hulk Hogan. New in package. The only downside about these particular figures is that once again, they only come out with two different wrestlers. Yeah, you really don't hear anything in the box. So you come out with two different wrestlers. With LJN, they had bad guy versus good guy. And with Hasbro, it's just basically good guy versus good guy. One of the nice aspects of this figure is the fact that they give him that Series 3 Hulk Hogan pose. So... If Series 3 was released in 92, I would have to say that these came out around 92 as well. Yeah, um, you can still hear it a little bit, but it's not like crazy clear. Yeah, I don't like this one because the waist is too too messed up. But, you know, from a display point, it, it, it's fine. It, it does what it's supposed to. <laughs> and... The man that at one point was outselling Hogan by a large margin. And to me, I, I don't care how much hate that you know wrestlers or even fans give to the Ultimate Warrior. There was never a more enthusiastic wrestler than the Warrior. I mean, his high energy that he brought to every match was insane. I mean, just him running down the aisle and getting up onto the onto the mat and just kind of like running around the ropes on the outside. 
you know, his shake and rubs, his music. I mean, Ultimate Warrior, there's a reason he's my number two all-time favorite wrestler. You know, was he the was he the best seller? Well, going back and watching these matches, hearing shoot interviews, yeah, uh, he he was bad. He was pre- he was pretty terrible. You know, I I thought he had one of the weakest finishers. Like he would do like this, uh, I don't know, like not fireman's carry, but he would do like a little push up thing, drop the guy, and then kind of do like a backsplash or whatever on him. I'm like. If he was Yokozuna, that would have been a killer or a finisher. But, yeah, it would hurt having a 250-pound guy, you know, jump on you. But, I mean, I don't think that's something that's going to wipe out guys like Hogan and, and Macho Man, etc. So, and, again, his 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 look, the face paint, always one of my favorites. Just absolutely amazing. No, uh... He didn't have any wrestling background. You know, he was just a gym buff and, you know, had the physique that Vince McMahon loved. And not only did he give him a shot, but he basically shot him up to the top almost immediately. And, uh, you know, I think Ultimate Warrior was the very first person to ever hold both heavyweight championship and intercontinental championship uh, simultaneously. I'm sure other people have have done that, but I can't remember who. I mean, gun to the head, if I had to guess, Bret Hart, but I don't think so, no. It, it couldn't have been Bret Hart. I, I don't think Shawn Michaels, but honestly, who else out there? And if you're talking about someone from 1999 onwards, forget about it. I have no clue whatsoever. Uh, the loose figure. And his core broke off. Uh, it was already damaged when it came in, so the uh, the loose Hogan and Warrior, I got them simultaneously from the same seller, and I think it came from, like, uh, Greece or something, so, you know, I'm fine. Uh, it wasn't, like, the most expensive thing in the world, and just having them loose, along with the carded, with the boxes, you know what, it's just an added thing I could add for this video, so, and... Did I pull the Ultimate Warrior already? <laughs> I don't know, man. That's like a very loud, off-putting, freaking uh, Mickey Mouse type of sound to it. Uh, these guys, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like because they're a little bit smaller, they could be somewhat fun to play. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, that is 16, or actually the 12 inch Hasbro's, uh, released around the same era. <clears throat> WCW came out with their 14 inch figures, so it, it doesn't seem like any of these figures really match up in size. So that's what killed that's another bad thing that you can't really use them against each other. So I, I've said, like, you know, once upon a time. As a kid, I would use Hasbro and Gloob all the time together. You know, no issues. They're both 4-inch figures. Why not? But with LGN, 16-inch figures. With Gloob, 14-inch figures. With Hasbro, 12-inch figures. It's like, why would you... Why would you do that? Uh, make them all, like, 12 inches or whatever. Make them easy so that they could all be playable, you know? But, you know, they don't really think about that. They want... That particular toy line wants you to purchase their their product. So, could I use this with the with the LJNs? Two inch difference, not a huge not a huge deal there. So sure. And Lex Luger. I mean, I think all of these are pretty fantastic. What I really like about these fourteen inch figures, though, I don't know if you can make it out. They do come with the uh, WCW Gold Championship belts. Now. Every single figure from the Galoob line, you know, little four-inch figures had championship belts. And I thought that's one one reason why Galoob was one of the better toy lines in that respect. Their figures in Series 1, you got about four or five really good ones. Series 2 really had a lot of fantastic ones, but I don't know, I, I still can't see them as my favorite figures. And I think it's because Ron Simmons was terrible, Lex Luger 4-inch uh, was terrible. Tom Zank wasn't 
good. Scott Steiner wasn't good. So, Arn Anderson and Ric Flair were average to below average. Sting was probably below average. Yeah, like you got about three or four like really perfect figures. These 14 inches, they, they look fantastic though. I didn't have these at the time I was doing my, my Galoo reviews. So, all we did was look at all the carded and loose figures way back when, when I was doing the glue blind. But, it's nice to finally be able to add in the 14 inch figures as well. Look at that. Look how solid that is. It is a, a lot of fun, and I like the fact that they actually tell you right here how big the figures, uh, how big the figures are. All right, so that was Lex Luger, and now we've got Ric Flair, still with the blue tights. So you know, same exact color scheme as his uh, four-inch predecessor. So you know, pretty pretty solid work. I would actually love to have these as loose figures as well. But, you know, if someone has an auction where they're selling like all four loose and I went on auction for like 100, 150 even, maybe. But I'm not going to actively go out <laughs> and uh, try to acquire 14 inch glue figures as a uh, loose individual display. No. The cards or the box sets, they're perfectly fine. So that was Ric Flair, the newest acquisition to this line, or at least newest acquisition for me, is Sting. The freaking, uh, his theme song, The Man Called Sting, at least I think that, that was the title, uh, that was definitely the lyrics, I think that was one of the greatest freaking theme songs ever. You know, uh, Hulk Hogan obviously has the greatest theme song ever. With Real American, but but Sting's song was freaking phenomenal as well, and that's what I want to do. Oh man, just kind of thinking about it, I want to do like a top five, no, top ten all time favorite theme songs, wrestling theme songs. I actually started making uh, doing some downloads on YouTube where I uploaded some like '80s or '90s uh, vintage cartoons theme songs. Now I just gotta figure out how to edit that into a video so that I can actually, you know, run have a nice little run through. But this is Sting again, same exact look and design with his four-inch figure. So I think from Galoob, the only thing that I'm missing is the wrestling rings, and I've seen the wrestling rings on eBay, and they're like what. $300, $500, so, I mean, yeah, there's still a few uh, Series 2 cards that I'm missing, but overall, this is fine, and uh, what is this? At Toys R Us, back in the day, this sold for $15. Insane. <laughs> And from the original Galoob 4-inch line, we already know Sid Vicious, my all-time favorite figure. He is, obviously, or at least his 4-inch figure is my my uh, George Washington of wrestling figures. This one, uh, I don't know if this is damaged, but it does, it's missing something right there. What's on these other cards, other boxes? No, it doesn't look damaged. Maybe that's just how it is, because there's nothing missing on that side. But Sid Vicious, no matter what you're looking at, I always feel like Sid Vicious is a must-have uh, for your collection. So obviously I got the Random Treasures 2 up of Sid Vicious for, you know, the Black Series 1 release. Um... I really, I haven't done it, but I've been thinking about it forever. I want to get another Ram Treasures rubber LJN figure of Sid Vicious in his pink singlet so that I can kind of put the, the Series 2 figures all together. But basically by doing that, you're spending twice the money because you're getting the exact same figure, just different color schemes. So, 
If that happens, I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> so, uh, this last one we're actually going to look at. Actually, I might I, I might bring down the, the bootlegs as well. I didn't even think about that. Um, I'm trying to look at this to see. Okay, here it is. So, these are made by Original San Francisco. Really? I think it's made by San Original San Francisco. All I see on here is toy makers. Yep, that's the San Francisco. So I was wrong. I thought it was Toy Biz. Nope, Original San Francisco made these figures. And I want to say, yeah, they look like they're about 12 inches as well. It's your uh, WCW and WO figures. This one is the Hulk Hogan figure. Hollywood Hulk Hogan. And, uh, you know, the box sets, they're not bad. There's also, like, a Macho Man out there, which I've been thinking about getting forever, but I don't know. Uh, I think if I see them for, like, 20 bucks, I'm like, okay, not a problem. But that people want to charge you, like, $30 shipping on it, I'm like, no. I mean, I, I, I don't have any intention of, 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 like, selling these guys, but... Theoretically, yeah, I'd like to get my money's my money back if I ever decide to sell them in the future, and especially years down the road, because that, that's probably when, if I ever do decide to sell anything, that's going to happen. You know, 20, 30 years from now, I would like to think that they'd be they'd be worth even more then than they are now. But what have I said in the in the past? Uh, one of my last, one of my last eBay videos, but <clears throat> in one of my eBay videos, I mentioned that. There's really a demographic of people that are going to be purchasing figures like these, right? Uh, you're If you started a collection when you're like 10 years old, 20 years old, 30 even, you're probably going to hold on to them until you're in the 50 range. At around age 50, you know what? You're thinking about being up there in age. You're thinking about retirement, and you're thinking about downsizing, right? So the people... You know, our age are the ones that are buying this stuff. But in the next five to ten years, everyone that kind of grew up with this stuff is no longer going to be interested in buying them. And the younger generation, they're not going to be interested in 1980s stuff. They're not going to be interested in the 1990s stuff. I mean, I'm sure you're going to find a few here and there, but it's you're not going to get ten years from now what you get into these, let's say, five years ago. So... Uh, that kind of sucks when I think about it that way, but I'm still hoping uh, that these are going to ex you know, exceed my expectations and be a lot more valuable in the future. Uh, these aren't talking figures, I don't think. I don't see no drawstrings or anything like that. You know, the pants design, I have a couple Hulk Hogan LJN Customs with this design, so, you know, that, that's pretty solid. They're not bad figures at all. Like I said, there is a... Oh, shoot. There is a uh, Macho Man I've seen in red. I think there might be a Sting figure as well. I could be wrong about that. But the only other figure that I have from this line is Goldberg. And I would have had to have gotten these guys on auction and maybe did like combined shipping... Or something because I, I think that's the only way I could have legitimately been interested in getting something like this. Now, given making this video right now, it does have me much more inspired to go out and get the other carded figures from this line. You guys already know, man. The original San Francisco Toy Maker line is my third favorite toy line. Once upon a time, I never heard of uh, that toy line. A few years ago, I started collecting, and I started getting a lot of those figures in, and you know what? Shoot. <laughs> uh, they easily jumped into the top three. Like, I, I think because they're reminiscent of LJNs to an extent, just a little bit smaller, and I like the designs and everything, and I love the, the box sets that they come in, so packaging was really nice. All right. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, we, we've seen these two figures before, but I'm just gonna show them off just so that you guys can see the different upscale versions. So we said Hasbro Talking Hogan was roughly 12 inches. So if you see this, I mean, I thought this was maybe 10 inches, but I don't know. I'm thinking more like eight inches now. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's do Warrior on Warrior. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, maybe these aren't 12 inches. Maybe these are 14 inches because I could have sworn that this was a 12 inch figure. Because otherwise this would be like eight inches or 10 inches and this would be like eight inches and I don't think this is the same size of an LJN uh, whatever not important they are just upscale figures so you know much different than what you're gonna find from other figures right so yeah this one ha has to be roughly eight inches eight or nine inches I don't know Like I said, unimportant. Uh, these are the knockoff upscaled figures. And I talked about it before when we looked at these two figures. I really thought that these might be like Hasbro figures because they're just too good to be ha to be uh, to be knockoff. Uh, he's got the exact you know head and fighting pose with the open hand and closed fist that you find in the original series one Hasbro. And do I have one sitting up here? I do not. But. So, I don't know. Uh, there are knockoffs in Spain. Uh, there's also a company in Mexico that does a lot of knockoffs. Obviously, uh, you know, China and Japan have a ton of wrestling knockoff bootleg figures. I, I just don't... I think that this was a... These were Mexican knockoffs, but... I, have, I still haven't been able to find any uh, history about these guys either. That's okay. So uh, that are those are some of the upscaled figures that you find from the different toy lines. Again, namely LJN, Hasbro, Galoob, as well as Original San Francisco. And I'm not surprised because Original San Francisco and Galoob are essentially the exact same company. Yeah, obviously, when Galoob shut down, uh, David Galoob and family uh, moved to or created the Original San Francisco toy line. I don't know if they're still around. I, I doubt it. But it's a shame because they've come out with some awesome collectibles. So they just weren't doing too well at the time that they came out. But nowadays, they should probably think about coming back into the business. I, I think a lot of uh, a lot of the older folks out there who collect or who are wrestling fans would really appreciate them. So, All right, guys. That is it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions or if you know of any figures that I'm missing that you think I'd be interested in, please let me know. Always looking for uh, recommendations. That's it for now, guys. Uh, thank you and goodbye. <laughs> Take care, buddy.